The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hi folks, I've got a chart up here on this uh, Tuesday, the 31st, uh, and I really believe very strongly that um, on Halloween, if you're going to put candy and stuff out, you've got to put out what you love. Because after all, if it's not all taken or eaten, somebody has to do that. All right, so the bonds are up 6.30 seconds. We're watching this really closely. Let me go to the TLT because <clears throat> sitting right on the uh, pink nine-period exponential moving average because just on a purely uh, on a scale that says where would this be oversold, where would it be overbought, what, 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 everything about this. Look at the cascade to the downside. Uh, each peak was just no more than a peak A, and then it fell. One peak, one bar peak, and then it comes back and breaks it within one bar. This is the weakest you can anticipate in any chart to the rollover on the right side in the dreaded H pattern. And this is exactly where you would say, hey, right here is where there should be some kind of, go to the TNX, that's the 10-year, there should be some kind of reversal. Well, you've got your reversal. At 50, well, it was just under 50, I think. Let me just check. Uh, the TNX went to 49.97. That's 4.997% on the 23rd of October. Let me just type that in there. 49.97. And what did I say it was on the what of October? Yeah. You should have remembered that. I think it said 24th. I'll call it 24th, but I'll come back and check it. Um, so it's already one, two, three, four, five, six sessions. 23rd, okay. Six sessions since then, and you've got your dreaded H pattern. Uh, I can do that. Let me just see, quickly see if I can find it. Yeah, dreaded H is this pattern. Yeah, I'm always looking at three core patterns, straight up, straight down. Cup formation, arch formation, mix of one and two or one and three. One and three is the dreaded H where it takes out the left side low and it keeps going lower. The Y is the reverse Y, green, because if it takes that out, look, there's a reverse Y. It goes up, there's a Y pattern, takes it out, Y pattern takes it out, big Y pattern takes it out, and now you're looking at a failed Y pattern that becomes the arch, the dreaded H. After the peak A, pulls back, even that's an A. And it's gone below, but actually it's running a little bit. It's only down eight cents at right now at 48.67. So this is a really important moment because uh, in the channeling methodology, a technique that I developed years ago, oh, years and years, decades ago, the Chapman Wave instant restart, and there's no other technique in the world that I've ever seen that is even close to this. I'm not. This has got nothing to do with. This is just an observation. I've never seen it before, and I'm not sure. Well, I understand why. It's because I alphabetized my, alphabetized my notation way back because I want to differentiate it from the uh, Elliott wave. It has really very little in conjunction with uh, Elliott wave, although I know in many of Elliott waves to say, wow, uh, you can get such clarity if you use these two things together. That's not the issue. The issue is if within three bars after a peak D, the fourth highest peak, there is another leg up. You can give it an alternate count, E slash A, F slash B, G slash C, and invariably if it goes to G slash C, there is a chance you cannot rule out, especially if the MACD is still strong and the 9 is still over the 14 and the stochastic's at 88%, that you make a little cup formation and then you go to a D and that's where you've got to be really careful. So who knows, right? Okay, so as it stands right now, what we've got is that the yields have pulled back some, but they haven't given you the clue yet because, look, the green nine-period moving average over the 14 is still very strong. To get it to weaken, you'd have to see 46.30. It's at 48.65, 46.30 or lower for that pink, that green to go pink. 
So as as we're looking at it now, yields are not yet quite saying they're ready. Look at the TYX. TYX is there. It is the TYX went to that alternate count. It then went to an F right there, and it's made that H pattern, but it's holding pretty well. The nine is still very strong. And there's your G. This is exactly what I was talking about. There's your Chapman Wave Instant Restart. Actually, I can get rid of this now because it's it's blocking out what would be Chapman Wave Instant Instant Restart right there in the TYX, the three-year T bond interest rate con continuous contract. And lo and behold, you get E slash A, F slash B, G slash C, and that invariably I've warned and warned and warned. Yes, you can get a fabulous turnaround at peak G. You saw it in Truff G in this morning in what we were looking at. What we were looking at. Oh, we were looking at um, do, 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 do. Um, <laughs> we were looking at, I'll get it in a minute. We were looking at the stock and it made a trough G and it was alternate count. It turned out to be a G and a D at the same time. Someone's going to help me, help me, help me. Um, I, I'm, I'll find it in a minute. I should know, I should know. I'm just blanking out right now. I'm not going to blank out. I'm going to go right there and get it because I want to know that I'm talking about apples to apple. The wolf. That's right. So this is a G and it's gone to a D on the upside, uppercase on the way up. So you've kind of fulfilled everything on the TYX that you need. At this point, we can easily start to see a pullback. 30-year T-bond uh, interest rate yield. This is the, this is the actual rate itself. And um, Wolf. Wolf. Wolf itself is trading at, don't type it on the chart, type it right there. Wolf Speed is the name of the company. Went to a D right there. Look, there it is, G slash D. And woof, big woof, big bounce, uh, up 6.23, up 22% at 3.98. Hey, Dan, congratulations to Dan. Um, yes, so the G was coincidental to everything else that he was looking at. I did have an alternate account. I wanted to actually show you. I was going to take my show to show you. So this is something for those Chapman waivers. Look, if you get to your D on the way down especially, and then you rally and you fail. Keep in mind, you've got to count the next series of lows, troughs we call them, um, in sequence as well. So this is a gray A. Why is it gray? Because it didn't go underneath that D. Otherwise, it would have been E. But the next one becomes an E slash B, then an F slash C, alternate count. That's all we're doing is just saying there could be an alternate count, which will give you a different mentality. That's all. It doesn't change the, the, what's there. And then there you get your G slash D. And look at that nice V-shaped pattern in the on-balance volume. Stochastic went from single digits to 13%. If this holds, what you want to see, if you, I, I suspect that you've taken something off and you want to hold some position, you should hold some position, um, because the market is attempting some kind of a, some kind of a basing area here. Uh, it's one of the reasons why... Um, I'm going, I'm going to tell you this. You see the high that was made on the 17th of October at 35.79? If it's able to hold above it, even just one day, then all of a sudden it's ugly candle. <clears throat> ugly candle of the 3rd of October, 37.60 high, comes into focus. Dow's now down only 14, as it keeps up $1.27. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, so tell me about the mini, the e-mini. Uh, I just want you to draw this in for you while we're live. Look, so you see that high right there, 930, around about 4191. You go to the low right there, and then you do a left side, right side price sequence. This is what I was talking about in many of the, of the positions that we were looking at. Let me just do this right here. Click, and there's your plumb line. That's the midpoint. There's your beautiful cup. Remember, we're looking at cups and arches, cups and arches, straight line, straight line, cups and arches. Well, here it is. Take that midpoint and put it in there, and where are we right now? Um, we we're in almost to that left side high of 41, uh, 41.93, I think, yeah, 93.25, beautiful cup formation. Uh, now, I'm doing this historically. In other words, this is, that was the low. That was a lower low. That went to your trough G. Look at that beautiful move after a trough G. But at the same time, what I like to do is do the chap wave inside wedge from a particular low point. And in this case, taking it there, and we go right to there. And then I keep the line. The whole idea is that sometimes lines, trend lines, just sit there and you, you, you ignore them when you don't need them. And out of the blue, they appear as really important after being just kind of background. So this is background right now to become foreground if you start to move higher again. So the E-mini went to a, a two... Um, to this most recent time, the 41.94 area, it it went all the way down to 41. Uh, what was that? 41.70 in this last pullback, but that slide that was at 10 o'clock went to ah, 41.70. So the the low for the day, and I'm, I'm meaning overnight, that is, at a trough G right there. Oh, I forgot to do this. I drew this in. Uh, this was this was. The 200 period moving average, look how important that is. Look how it hit that, and then it hugged it, magged it. Oh, you can't get away from it, and then all of a sudden you get repelled. The further away you get repelled, either up or down, says, ha, now that magnet line is just being reversed and becomes a propellant to the direction you're going in. And look at that nine period moving average, how beautiful it is. goes to a little doji candle. I had this drawn in when I did Tommy's show earlier on. Some people pointed out we had that. Left side, right side, price time match with a with a doji candle, 
and we will pull back to the 200 period moving average. This is going to be a work in progress. This low that was that was made on Friday. I'll go into that in a moment. But yeah, the other questions came in. I want to get to them right now. So pins. We were doing this in the show earlier on. I said I was waiting for someone to mention it, someone in particular to mention it in the dead, who is always looking at this, had it at some point, I think made some money on it, and then got out. Look at this beautiful move, up 4.84 to 29.95, up to almost 20%. So this is, I can always say pin, pin interest. The way I always looked at it, pin interest. Why it's interest rate related, but it doesn't seem to have anything to do with the chart. Doesn't look like an interest rate chart, no. And then I looked at it and said, "What does it do? Oh, it's a discovery engine for recipes, home ideas, style. Style's not going out of fashion, folks. And I think that this is a really strong move to the upside. It made the dreaded H pattern broke to the lower below 24 uh, three sessions ago." Uh, four sessions ago, two sessions ago, it must have been Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, Thursday. Then Friday, an inside day when the market was uh, really ugly. This held well, had a good session yesterday, and then gaps up, leaves an island reversal to the upside. And I would not have expected that a peak D could be made in this uh, instrument in the next few weeks. I just, I would have looked at it and said, oh, a lot of work needs to be done. But a good, must have been good earnings and outlook, whatever it is, this is what you need to see. So, yes, I think this is in play, and it's in the area right now. I don't know about buying it at 29.75. I'd probably say I'd like to wait for a bit of a pullback, maybe uh, 28.80. But you could have separate, maybe three separate positions, a little nibble in the hair, wait for it to pull back once. But your idea is to buy it because it's acting really well in this environment. But um, so the, I don't know about the question whether you want to buy it. I suspect you do want to buy it. And my answer is keep it, the way you do your homework. Um, this this suits you very well. Um, you could just start like you sometimes do. Put your foot in the door of Pinterest. And then you can make decisions over a period of a few days. But this is great. This is what you want to see. It acted well. On Friday, when the market was down, it acted well yesterday in anticipation of the earnings, and now it's acting really well at 29.84. I like this. In fact, I'm going to put it down. I want to do a little work on this. I don't like to buy gap ups like this. Um, anyway, we'll see. Now, the next thing we want to look at is a question came in about um, SoFi. So SoFi is a stock that we had only because I wanted something in the financials and the regular old financials like a JP Morgan or JP Morgan look at this JP Morgan uh, oh, even today after two decent days it looks horrible after Friday's gap was smashed to the downside and this is a leader in the field Bank of America I'm not we haven't touched it for ages we used to have it every year for a good number of months, sometimes almost for eight or nine months, and then we'd get out of it off a very nice profit as it came down, and then we get back in, and then we get out, and then, oh, haven't touched it for I think maybe it's about a year. Um, it's just been acting horribly, and someone said to me, could be going out of business. I don't know about that because they also have that uh, brokerage part of it, the Merrill side of it. So I, all I can say is that so far was the one because it was in electronic area basically but it also had and I, I forgot to put this in here it had those student loans and as I read it now um, student loans um, the way I thought I heard it some time ago is that they were less and less um, beholden to the student loans and more to other types of instruments that they are participating in. But the chart, um, it was acting well. This is where we got in and we got, we got taken out. And I said, no, we're done. We have to wait. And then it had, uh, so today it's up 43 cents at 7.36. After a really crazy, there's one of those really crazy candles you see with the big body, but yet even longer legs to the outside. 
just a, a range of 788 to about 668, I think it was. Let me just check. To six, yeah, 668. Um, I mean, that's huge in one day for a stock like this. So all I can say is it's the way it acts to earnings. I don't know if this is earnings, the earnings report, but I have to give it time now. I'm kind of done with the whole financial area. Just for the moment, I need some evidence. I don't want the whole week to play out. I want to see exactly what happens in the financial area with XLF. Remember, I always say that gold, watch gold closely, because gold sometimes reflects the fear that big participants like countries or huge funds, um, and especially hedge funds, have when they get pretty nervous about the financial sector. So far, I don't see that here, but it's not a pretty top chart, except. Hope I'll cover that. Got a couple of more questions. I'll Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument you have to practice sure but you also need excellent instruction from experts at TFNN you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis and it's not just dry tedious text either TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV live every market day from 8 30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world from the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money watch online at tfnn.com or on tfnn's youtube channel and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors don't forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv Question someone who said CVM uh, is in the moonshot category as IBRX. I had that IBRX flashed on my streamer list uh, last night. So all I do is exactly the same as we did with the others. Chapel Wave uh, uh, inverted Roman candle, green Roman candle. If this is able, I uh, CVM doesn't matter what it is. It's uh, Cell Dash Ski uh, Corporation, and it's not skiing, folks. This is science, probably. Um, if it's it's trading at 151, if at any point in the next, oh, it needs speed now. It needs at least 
Actually, it's past the speed dial. Uh, okay, it's in a different category. But if it's able to trade above 1.86 for more than 90 minutes, no, I'm going to give it two hours because of the way it, 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 it gives back so quickly. It, then that's really positive. 208 would be the 200 period moving average target. And then the high of 2.31 uh, would be the, the next target on the upside. If it fails to do that, Everything under that says, ah, oh, it's 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 acting well, but to really get to the high of uh, seven sessions ago um, or eight sessions ago, that that's what you'd have to see. Uh, another question came in: Could I look at? So I looked at so far. Oh, oh, I didn't tell you about so far what what the parameters are. So so far, you can see the weekly chart: nine pre moving average moved negative. Right? That's not a good sign. Uh, not just narrowly, but the MAC these weeks, the cast is horrible at 10%. On balance volume is pretty good. But the the daily chart is, you have to have the daily chart working well to help the weekly chart. So you see this candle with a high of 7.88 uh, 7 on the 30th. Um, that happens to be yesterday. Whoa, so much going on. It feels like two, three days ago. Um, you want to see, give it a little time. I would prefer to see that SoFi is actually trading in the 8 to 8.10 area, $8 and $8.10 cent area, to even think about it again as something that I would buy. It, it, I gave it a chance because it was in, in, in an area I wanted to be in, only not for technical reasons, just because if the market is going to move much, much higher, you're going to have to, as far as I'm concerned, you have to have the financials, otherwise it's a, it's a shorter term rally. To have a more sustained move, I think you've got to have the financials participating. And that leaves you with bonds and all that. This was in the electronic area of the whole banking system. So I thought they didn't have all the that paperwork that goes with having brick, bricks and you know, mortar, that sort of thing, or, or steel and glass. Um, so in the meantime, that's what I'd be looking for. But I'd hold off right now. Next question came in. Could I look at – so – uh, let me just do this. So the SMH, look at this. I've got a one-to-one. -one. Let me just show you this pattern. The symmetry has just been phenomenal. I always do this. Uh, in a way, it kind of relates to a lot of what uh, you TFNN, the hosts talk about, but it's something I've done just forever. I've always worked with channel lines. I love channel lines. It's just a whole process. We also used to have Bud Rolfs, like Bud Rolfs used to be here. He had a way of looking at a channel line and saying, wait for it to come back to the to the trend line that it left. So it goes away and then wait for it to come back. And that's when you make decisions. And if it breaks out, see how it tests it. I have a, a way of looking at it, which is, I, I would say it's, it's kind of similar, but it's based on the Chapman Wave methodology. So in other words, it... There are variations to it, and that the variations are really important. Look at this beautiful symmetry between the blue number of points to the downside, but it's the degree. I do this. I discovered years ago that angles are very important. I, I, I should call trade station. I've never done this. I keep talking about it. All they need to t do is take a trend line, a line like that, and if I grab it on this side and I raise it up, and there should be a little thing that I click and it gives me the percentage like this. I can tell that it's about a three and a half or four percent. Yeah, it's about a three percent rise. I would like it to tell me. Then I can get the six one eights. I can do all those. With, I can do it visually, but that's, I mean, you want it mathematically. So I haven't, it's so easy. I don't know why I haven't actually yelled and screamed and said, could you please, could you please? But maybe I will do that someday. But in the meantime, Channel lines are very important. The Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. So look how the a semiconductor got repelled from the 161.17 high it made on the uh, uh, 30 on the 31st, I think. Yeah, 31st of July. We went short on the 2nd of August at just over 159. Still short. So 161.17 uh, within about two points of the all-time high. We've had it, and it went to 143.35. Look at that beautiful number, the sorry, blue line, green line. And what did it do? It reversed right at the Chapman Wave inside track, start of an inside track repellent line, came down and went to the Chapman Wave inside track. Now I'm going to draw this in. I, it's getting messy. I don't like that. But it tells you, this gives you all the information that you need. Look, 
This is getting into the propellant zone. Will this time, will it hold? That's the reason why I don't think we've made the low yet. I think we've made a low. I want for the semiconductors, how does it test this? So look at this angle, the exact percentage change, percentage decline, same percentage angle here, same percentage angle on the way up to the Chapman Wave inside track lower repellent zone. Now it's coming into the lower propellant zone. What happens next? The castings at 7%. Well, before we were in this area, that's where you got your reversal. But look at the on-balance volume. It gave you a very nice V-shaped turnaround, V-shaped turnaround, nothing yet. I haven't got that. It's still a little early in the, in the, in the down move for the semiconductors. Now, wait a minute. What about um, Advanced Micro comes out with earnings, I think, today? So Advanced Micro, look at this. The dreaded H pattern fails at a peak C, goes to a lower low, so that goes to a C minus, and that's usually not a good sign. It says it's showing a lot of weakness, and here you are with the market uh, down, uh, Dow's down 56, S&P's down four, only four. It's not a big deal after such a big move yesterday, and yet it can't get out of its own way. But it's at a point where it could have a bit of a bounce if the earnings or the, the lookout period says, hey. In the next three months, we should, or two months, we can see a light at the end of the tunnel. Maybe the light is a, a train coming along. All right, we don't know yet. But look at NVIDIA. I'm not sure why it ever flips like that to the background chart. All right, NVIDIA, is, oh, NVIDIA I was going to say, gee, it looks just like the Dow. I mean, like the advanced micro devices. That's because I never changed charts. NVIDIA. There we go. NVIDIA, there's your dreaded H pattern, went to a C, C minus because it's made a lower low. And now you've got your trough D. So what we do is we say, this is a trough A, higher up. This is a trough B, higher up. This is a trough C, lower than that. And here's your D, leg D. So as I see it right now, there's a lot of work that needs to be done because you've got your arch formation, your dreaded H formation in one of the absolute top semiconductors. And that was another reason why I felt comfort when it had that big spike to 502.66 back on, I think it was August the 14th or something, what, August 24th, August the 24th. And, uh, and we were already short. And that said, well, if it breaks out from here, but we gave it a peak denotation, and look how it's pulled back. So all I can say is, duh, I wouldn't be too aggressive in wanting to go long. So with that said, Dow is down 62, SP is 6.44. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Wow, I can't believe how many uh, uh, texts I got there. Uh, but I refer to the uh, uh, the Kit Kat. Uh, everybody's got their favorites. We've got all got our favorites. So look at this. This is Newmont Mining. Look at this move down today, down 90 cents at 37.80. ASA, one of the South African gold mine. Did I type it back in the den? I did. ASA, look at this. ASA, um, holding very nicely. Each one's doing some G NG is a stock that we often go to. As a very low priced one that can drift up with the tide, but at $3.60, it's not really showing anything. RGLD, um, Royal Gold, uh, not a good looking chart. Weekly looks terrible, monthly looks lousy. So it's very specific, and stocks that are, uh, what's the one? FNV, I often follow that. Oh, oh, 123.72 down 250. What happened here? All right, well, this one doesn't count. This is Frank and Nevada Corporation Gold. So uh, the, it must be some political thing. This is this is what you see when you, I don't know where, where they are, uh, Frank and Nevada. Anyway, yeah, something's wrong with this chart. So it's very specific. AU, let's look at AU. AU is um, Anglo Gold, Ashante, holding okay, but it really not. it's not breaking out unless it's going to become, uh, I can't, this was too low. Pity it would have been a Chapman Wave um, stalk leg formation. Huh, maybe. Let me just see. Yeah, I don't like to force this particular pattern. When it shows up, it's great. No, I took out that left side. Can't do it. That would have been really nice. I would have said it's on its way to 1986, and then you've got to be careful. 1852 right now. All right, that doesn't apply. It doesn't mean to say it can't go there, but it's not go there based on this particular technique. All right, so I wanted to show you a couple of other things. So high-grade copper, look at this, high-grade copper stuck in the lower range. Uh, this is a geopolitical uh, commentary about, I'm sorry, this is economically geopolitical, not geopolitical, geo-economica, uh, a representation of what's going on around the world. And if you look at wood, the ISHES Global Timber and Forestry ETF, why this is going to be important. It's got the inverted Chapman Wave falling axe formation, which is also an arch formation. We saw this in GLD, uh, it was, no, GDX last year, so it was earlier this year sometime, and then it made lower lows. This says it doesn't have to go much, much deeper down, but it's, it, it's probably going to test the base, and that's in the 60. Uh, 69 area and yet it is a 70.68 and there's that arch formation in the weekly chart that's an international commentary as well so in the meantime there is just there's enough how can i put this there's enough rotation through oh natural gas i, I did natural gas just now i'll do it again uh natural gas i think is starting to move much much better even though we were taking out oh look at that I said that I loved it. I made the stop. I had to make a stop, even though we had a small position, which is even that was a split position. So there were two little mini positions. We got stopped out. I'm, I like this. We had UNG. UNG is the natural gas 
um, natural gas fund. And look at this. We got in there. We put in a stop, and it really gapped down sharply. Seven was the stop. And we got taken out, and now it's trading at 739. Not a big deal, because this is a, a I say this is a work in progress. And I, I emphasize progress because the unbalanced volume did rally a little bit. It was high each time. It's higher on each low. That's good. The stochastic is 47%, uh, but the MACD has been moving beautifully to the upside. And the price in the rect long rectangle formation hasn't decisively taken out the midpoint. Uh, I don't want to make this messy, but I'll just have to do it. The midpoint. So I like, I like natural gas here. I think it's got something going for it for November. Um, but it's not easy to play. And not only that, uh, you've got to be able to hold it overnight because the UNG, they are, they are, I've seen it move at night just a little bit. So it depends on your pro, on your uh, platform if you're able to trade it in the evening. But I like this. Peak A, peak B, the second peak A, and a second peak B. And this should have a culmination of trying to get to a leg C. These should all be gray. I'm not going to change them right now. It should have a culmination at 808. Once it hits 810, above the 808 level, uh, it's in new, it's in fresh territory. It's in territory that says, wow, now I can look at the upside and it's got a lot going all the way into the nines. So I like it, but that it's, it's natural gas. Something's been wrong with it for ages. It's just a glut, I guess. I think that glut might be wearing away. But so far, winter doesn't seem to be too bad in the winter, in the parts of the country that have early winter. So all I can say is this is a work in progress. And it went, it went L, the nine went, it was S for cell in the nine period moving average. Then it went to L for a day. Then it went to S for a week, sorry, a week. And then it went to S, which is cell. Then it went to L again today. I, I kind of like it. So the question was, UNG, and I'm saying to you, I think it's in play, but you've got to know how to do it yourself. E-R-Y, uh, E-R-Y, I'm long E-R-Y. There is the question, what do you think? E-R-Y, I can never remember. E-R-Y is the energy, energy bear. Ooh, energy bear two times shares. So this is E R Y energy bear. So oh, is this the X? Let me see the X L E X L E. Okay, yeah. So this is the inversion of the X L E. They're in different categories altogether. Natural gas completely hasn't been doing what uh, gas has done. I'm just going to for the moment say heating oil is holding well. It's not breaking up, but it's not breaking down. It's in, in, good. I want you to check that out. Okay, so E-R-Y. Yeah, I think I like your position. I don't know when you got in, but it's in peak A. Let me give you this here. Look, here's you. And, and it's a little difficult. Sometimes the inversion of whatever it is that you're following because of the recalculation at the end of each day, they don't quite make the same peaks. You can miss one by a, a fraction. So this is A. That's B. It fractionally went to a C. I, I like it. As it says right now, I like it. Although I'd be nervous in this, in this going into winter. Hmm. Oh, I, I tell you what. Yes, it's a short X of year. That's what I just figured. So um, all I can say is I, this should go to a D, but not always in the inversion. So you get it because of the uh, recalculation. For instance, this just barely went to a C, and yet the XLE, right there, look, the XLE, has gone to that leg, lower lower trough there. Okay, so as I'm looking at it right now, I think that your X, E or Y, you know what I would do? It's had a really nice move. I don't want to mess with your chart. I don't want to say take a little bit off here. You know? Just watch it closely. Because if it starts to trade, even though it's a leg C, look how sharp that peak B pullback was. So even if, watch the XLE closely, watch crude oil, watch anything to do with energy. But on a purely technical basis, if this, today's low is at 27.43, if by the end of the day it's getting close to 2743, 
then I would take just a little bit off. If it closes here and tomorrow it goes one penny above um, 28.24 for a leg D, I'd immediately, if you haven't taken anything off, take a little bit off at that point and raise your stop. I'll be back. Dow's down 14. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFA. NN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. So, a couple of questions came in. Let me answer them as quickly as possible. What do I want to see in gold? Where do, you, where do you see closing? It doesn't matter about a closing price in gold. I think it's true. The continuous contract had a high of 2019.7 three days ago. Uh, 2019.8 makes a leg D, and that's where I'm going to see the big test. If gold holds really well above 19, um, 1990 over the next uh, entire week, this entire week, then you're going to you. There's I don't see why the gold index, the gold miners shouldn't at least have a pretty decent bounce. And that's where that's going to be the big test of which are the leaders in the area. Uh, the dollar, the dollar is just holding so well, it should have pulled back. It's going sideways. Maybe it's building sideways energy. Both sideways can also lead to a smash to the downside. But I don't see it yet because that weekly chart so far. Is still very positive. The lines over the 14. The question was the S&P. So the S&P right now, I said to subscribers, if we see the Dow uh, um, over uh, plus 80 after about um, three o'clock, that's going to be very good action, anticipating something very positive with the Fed. But if it starts to pull back and we're down minus 90 or more, we've already been down sharply, uh, uh, sharp leash. 
earlier on, and how we're coming back. Buyers are coming in. As long as we're settling like this, it means that the give back from yesterday, we've had some digestive moment. So that's what I'd be looking at. The S&P right now, I would like to, if I'm bullish, and right now I we, we've, we didn't add any short to any position. We actually added a long position. So bias is slightly more positive than bearish, even though we're short the SMHs and we're short the Dow. But a very short term position, you and 4197 is the pink nine period moving average. Can it touch it this week? Uh, that's going to be the big question. I just think this is a low and not the low. Doesn't mean to say we have to break the low of Friday, but I think there's some testing that has to be done. So, so I'm wrapping it up, handing it over to wonderful Steve Rhodes, and I'll see you. I'll be back. I'm late. Okay. So have a great day. See you a little later. Check out my open.